Good noontide from sunny Honolulu. This is Howard Wig, Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii. Thank you one and all for joining us. And, you know, politicians generally have a not so good name. Whenever there's a mistake, everybody likes to blame them. However, there is one, I hesitate to call him a bureaucrat, but he is in the government hierarchy. And he has a bumper sticker that reads, I heart Ernie Lau. And that is indeed my guest this afternoon. So welcome, welcome, Ernie. We haven't physically seen one another for, for many, many years here. Well, th thank you, you Howard, for having me. <laughs> that is quite an honor. I heart Ernie Lau. And let me begin with the fact that on my in my own water bill was a stuffer water protect our precious legacy and more and more we're seeing from climate change there's more water in the atmosphere which results in things like what do you call it the atmospheric rivers going through california and flooding the heck out of many large regions, and then the water goes away. And next thing you know, we have a drought. So, Ernie, I know that you have uh, thought about this. We have periods of heavy rain. If we could only retain more of that water for, for future use. Any any thoughts in that uh, direction? Yeah, th thank you, Howard. You know, we are doing a study right now uh, to look at one of our large open reservoirs that we control, the Nuluana Reservoir Number Four, uh, it has a lot of capacity, so it could be used to kind of capture some of these intense short-term duration rainfall events, and then uh, take that water, treat it to a certain degree, and then use it to recharge our underground aquifer. So basically, use the underground aquifer as storage. So these brief, short, inten high-intensity rainfall capture that and then use it uh, for long-term uh, from our aquifer. Because our aquifers are going down, so there's plenty of capacity down there? Uh, yeah, what we, you know, all of our, our drinking water right now in, in on this island, uh, island of Oahu, originates as rainfall. Uh, so that's precious rains carried by the trades or the southerly Kona storms, uh, depositing the rain over especially our mountainous watershed areas along the Koalau and Waianae Mountains. Uh, so that rain percolates down through the porous volcanic rock and recharges these underground aquifers. But where how that rain happens over our islands over the long term has an impact on our freshwater resources. So uh, we need to start to look at that uh, uh, we have done um, studies with the University of Hawaii researchers. Um, going out to 2100. And, you know, there are two scenarios being envisioned right now. Uh, either we're going to get wetter, uh, especially along the Koala Mountains, and maybe drier along the Waianais, or we're going to get drier overall. Uh, so we have to prepare for our future. Hmm. Well, you know, there was a, a guest from uh, Thailand who spoke at the UH School of Architecture just last week and I can't pronounce her Thai name, but she is a renowned uh, geological engineer. And what she has done in Bangkok, Thailand, is taken a flood area that after every monsoon rain, it would cause really, really bad flooding. And she has redirected, or she's landscaped a beautiful park, which in turn collects the water instead of letting it spill all over and puts it into the reservoir under, or the aquifer under uh, Bangkok. And she just, she called it uh, nature's law, gravity. Let's make use of nature's law. And she has succeeded in uh, reducing the, the flooding area in, in Bangkok, which of course is a huge city. I don't know if you, you have landscape architects with, with similar ambitions. Uh, actually, we're, we're part of a broader citywide effort called One Water. 
uh, looking at water, uh, all types of water, storm water, wastewater, uh, rainwater, uh, drinking water as a, a resource to be managed in an integrated, comprehensive fashion. So it involves multiple city departments working together to manage water uh, jointly uh, for the good of our community. This one water approach is similar to, I just read an article also uh, about Singapore and what they've done to capture their stormwater and meet their uh, their city's needs for that small uh, small country of Singapore. Pretty amazing, um, but that's the approach. And and Howard, actually, it's it's the practices of what uh, the people that first came to Hawaii, the Kanaka Maoli, uh, they practice uh, kind of the one water, I would say, integrated water resources management uh, by looking at the whole ahupua'a from mountains to the ocean and managing the resource and the environment and man's activities uh, in a more integrated, holistic way, uh, learning to live with the land and with the vai. Hmm. Yeah, I'm something of an amateur historian, and it never ceases to amaze me that when Captain Cook first arrived in Hawaii, he the estimated population back then was somewhere between a half million and a full million. And of course, we've got about a million on this island now, and we import virtually everything, but the Kanaka Mo'oli were described as being large and strong and healthy, and the average British sailor on Captain Cook's and other ships were, was scrawny and emaciated. And that, that spoke volumes about the Hawaiians' ability to be self-sufficient, in, including having plenty of uh, fresh water which may segue into the fact that the vai means fresh water, vai vai means uh, wealthy. They, they had their priorities straight here. Yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah. And what, you know, I look at uh, my sewer line charges and they're larger than the water line charges. And I think one of your big, big challenges is the fact that in many neighborhoods, the water lines and the sewer lines are deteriorating. Is that part of your responsibility also? Uh, yeah, well, I actually want to clarify. So the water lines are, uh, for most of this island, except maybe uh, in some small areas like Laie, uh, the military bases at Joint Base Pearl Harbor Hickam, the rest of the water systems serving the island are predominantly owned by and operated by the Board of Water Supply. The sewer lines are actually the responsibility of the Department of Environmental Services, another city department. Uh, so although they appear on the same bill coming to your home, like your home and my home, um, they're actually uh, going to two different city agencies. So the water charges come to the BWS, sewer charges go to environmental services. And what about uh, maintenance of both of those? I, I live in the back of Manoa, and I swear every two or three years, there's a certain section of road that suddenly has red flags around it and police. And I don't know if it's a water line or a sewer line, but it has collapsed once again. Yeah, yeah. yeah we have aging infrastructure. So in total on the island for the Board of Water Supply, we have about 22,100 miles of pipes, underground pipes. And Howard, some of those are over a century old now. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's a continued investment and we're, uh, that we need to do and to replace these lines uh, over time. And and in the uh, during my tenure as a manager now, it's going on now to uh, 12 plus years, um, I have, um, we've really ramped up our capital program or the program to invest in our aging infrastructure uh, from 40 or $50 million a year to now uh, 150 to $200 million a year. Mm -hmm. And I've heard, I don't know if it's made its way to Hawaii, that you can take a smaller pipe, I think it's made out of polyethylene or something, and stick it into existing pipes and just kind of push it through. 
Uh, that's that's, that's true. Or is that happening? Or? Uh, no, that happens. There's different ways to install water lines. Uh, and we've used this in certain sections of our pipe uh, where it would have been really difficult to actually uh, uh, install a brand new pipeline and uh, keep while well, keeping the old pipe in service. So uh, we, we've been able to do that. That that's called slip. This is called slip lining or putting a liner inside of the pipe. And I think the wastewater uh, environmental services department does it on sewer lines also. Uh, it's a little easier for them to do it uh, because a lot of their system, their collection system, is gravity based, not pressurized pipe. For board of water supply, everything is under pressure uh, mm -hmm. to meet our needs uh, of our community. And. Speaking of under pressure, that involves uh, pumping, a heck of a lot of pumping. And you and I both worked in the energy efficiency field for a while. Any thoughts of upgrading these pumps? And I, I'm imagining that the pumps are pretty darned uh, huge. Any thoughts uh, of upgrading them to more efficient units? Or? Uh, yeah, we've actually done some of that work already. Uh, we did do something, and Howard, yes, this is going to be familiar to you at the state energy office, energy savings performance contracting. Uh, we've done, I've worked on that while I was at the state uh, with DAGS, uh, with you also at DBED. Um, but we've uh, actually looked at efficiency, more efficient pumps and motors, um, uh, trying to adjust the power factor on these large horsepower uh, pumping stations uh, to try to save energy and cost. Uh, it does take a lot of energy to pump water. And because we almost uh, serve almost a million people every day with fresh drinking water, uh, our electricity bill the other year was about $33 million, just our electricity bill, just to, and majority of that is to pump about 145 million gallons a day, every day to meet the needs of our community. I, I would point out that we probably are serving more than a million because I think at any given time, there are something like 200,000 tourists. That's town. true. That transient population, that's a lot of it in Waikiki or Koalina, uh, mm -hmm. you know, where we have to serve them also. Yeah. So any thought, just speaking of electricity costs, of taking advantage of Hawaiian Electric's time of use offer? where we are now blessed with too much solar power from photovoltaics. So yeah. we have to do something to use it. So Hawaiian Electric is urging people to use as much electricity as they can during the middle of the day <clears throat> and doing the incentive by lower costs. And then when the evening peak hit, hits, the uh, cost goes way, way up. Any way you can uh, take advantage of that with those huge pumps. Uh, there may be ways that we could do that uh, uh, where we would be pumping when the cost of electricity is lowest. Uh, we do also in our water system, not only the 2,100 miles of pipes, but we have about 172 water tanks around the system. Uh, and those tanks store water, usually enough water to meet at least a day's worth of needs without pumping. Uh, so between the storage that we have uh, located in these sealed tanks, they're usually at higher elevation. Mm -hmm. uh, we can moderate our time of pumping uh, to try to fit within the time of use rates. We've also uh, conducted a pilot study uh, with Hawaiian Electric. We do a, uh, try to do a lot of collaboration with the electric utility since we re really rely upon them and we have a big electricity bill. Uh, looked at uh, something called demand response. Uh, so we did that mm -hmm. pilot. And it looks positive, and I want to try to expand the demand response, um, time of use rates, and maybe even uh, leveraging uh, batteries, uh, battery storage to reduce some of the, um, the the peak demand or high demand factor uh, that we our large pumps when they start up they they use a lot of electricity initially to get running, uh, but once they're they're running they use less. Mm -hmm. But we have to pay that demand charge. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Is there a way of uh, modulating the initial uh, demand so that it ramps up slowly instead of going up in a big spike initially? Yeah, yeah that's one where I think uh, utilizing battery storage might help to modulate that. 
uh, that initial uh, surge in uh, energy demand uh, so that we can um, save, save money. So looking at uh, that, uh, we've also installed about three megawatts of renewable energy, photovoltaic energy in our system uh, through our ESPC project. And we're looking for opportunities to uh, actually do more renewables also on our system, on our lands. Well, congratulations. You're doing all of us a favor, getting us cleaner, to, closer to 100% clean energy then. Yeah. yeah. It's been a good, you know, partnership with Hawaiian Electric because there's that strong energy water uh, nexus. If people take shorter showers, they use less uh, hot water, which means less energy costs to provide that hot water, but also saves precious uh, drinking water by uh, and keeps that in our underground aquifers. Absolutely, which, you know, given the huge fluctuations in climate conditions that we're seeing all, all over the world, that, that large amount of stored water is very likely gonna come in very handy, even within our lifetimes. Yeah, I, I, we are facing some serious challenges, Howard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but the good thing is we're we're getting ready for it right now. Yeah, yeah. and I and I think the uh, what's what I'm encouraged is that the younger generation, they, I think they're getting it. Uh, they understand it, and they're preparing for the, uh, the challenges that they're going to face in their lifetimes too. Mm -hmm. Uh, just to uh, pat myself as an individual on the back a little bit, I acquired many years ago a beautiful home in the back of Manoa, very, very, very wet, about 120 inches of rain a year, and I have a gradual slope roof. And what I did was have technicians put in uh, gutters that extend out about uh, two and a half feet from the roof line so that the water from the roof goes into the landscaping. And in other places where the water is falling, I put, uh, uh, what is it, Gra grasscrete, uh, the, tube, the concrete tubes that allow the water to come in, all of which leads to harvesting virtually 100% of the water that uh, falls on, on my property, whereas my neighbor, as just concrete, concrete, concrete. And after a heavy rain up there, his driveway is virtually a river, whereas my driveway is just, just a tiny little trickle of water. And oh. I'm wondering about uh, Hawaiian or Board of Water Supply incenting uh, per permeable surfaces and incenting people to harvest that uh, roof water. You know that's a that's an interesting idea. We we do have a rebate program for people to install rain catchment systems or rain barrels uh, to harvest the water. So we'll reimburse uh, part of the cost to do that. We also conduct classes. Um, that's an interesting concept of uh, rebating uh, for uh, permeable surfaces. I know that the Department of uh, Facilities Maintenance or DFM is looking at stormwater stormwater utility in the future. Mm -hmm. And they have put out uh, different recommendations or guidance on uh, how to reduce discharge off property by creating more permeable or porous surfaces so you don't, the water percolates down and stays on site as opposed to running into the streets, uh, mm -hmm. into the storm system. Yeah, yeah. And let's see, another idea that I had, no, that, that one uh, slipped away. Oh, uh, I know, in the energy efficiency business, we uh, go down to the residential level and we work with uh, Pono Homes. I don't know if you're familiar with them. What they do is actually go into a residence at the invitation of the owner, of course, and they install different energy efficient appliances, such as LED lamps, but they also install uh, Low flow shower heads and uh, faucets. I don't, do we still call them low flow or do we have a more? Uh, yeah, I, I think that's still, that. a, that's still a pertinent uh, term that's used, you know, low flow or water savings uh, mm -hmm. shower heads, uh, water efficient shower heads. 
we actually do work with that, that company. And mm -hmm. uh, coincidentally, Howard, we just started in the last, uh, I guess this is the second week of our, our outreach uh, a program to Kupuna to senior citizens mm -hmm. with their permission going into their home to conduct uh, water audits uh, to show where there's opportunity to uh, save water or to find help find leaks inside or outside the property. We just started that. Um, so interesting. I think it's going to be the helpful. Kupuna, of course, work, live on fixed incomes. So just, just a few dollars savings, that's, that's a big deal. Yeah, and and you know, as I get older too, uh, <laughs> to be able to hear a running toilet gets a little bit more challenging over time. Uh, and sometimes, you know, when a running toilet is probably your, one of your biggest water wasters in your home, uh, so uh, this program will, they'll look for leaks in the in the toilets. You know, like a leaky flapper valve that needs to get replaced. Mm. And how, this sounds like a fairly ambitious program, and it goes right along with the fact that we need to, we as government uh, people need to focus on disadvantaged communities because we realize there's a large gap between those of us fortunate enough to have a, a really good job and nice places to live, and then there's the people who don't have. So this is going right at the... Uh, in many cases, the low, lower income people. How how in the world did you initiate this? I mean, this is uh, well, quite you know, we, uh, uh, we've always kind of thought about it, and uh, and recently, the, the our board last November adopted new water rates because for the water supply, we are financially self sufficient to maintain and operate our island wide water system. We don't have any property tax revenue come in to the board of water supply, so it's people like you and I paying our water bill. The water charges come to us and they pay for the operation maintenance of the water system. So we felt that uh, we had to do what is necessary in terms of rates to ensure we had enough revenue to be, continue to provide safe and dependable water uh, service to our community. The challenge is affordability. So looking at uh, disadvantaged communities and if we can encourage them to uh, uh, practice better water conservation and assist them in that effort, that could help to reduce their bill. Uh, mm -hmm. Because for the BWS at least, our, per, our, our bill is set up that the fixed charge is a smaller portion of the typical average bill. The water use charger or charges for the per thousand gallons of use, uh, that is the predominant uh, size of the bill uh, for the water bill. Uh, water BWS water bill for our average homeowner. And how did you uh, actually initiate it? Did you actually pick up the phone and say, "Hey"? Uh, uh, it was actually it was actually hard. It was at a mayor's town hall meeting that we had in Kalihi last year, uh, where uh, somebody from a nonprofit in the that works in the Kalihi area and other parts of the island, working with disadvantaged uh, seniors, especially. Uh, brought up the issue. Is there anything we're doing to help them save water, uh, conserve water, which will help reduce their bill? Uh, and that idea kind of sprung to this program that we just initiated uh, uh, last week. And we're, we're kind of focusing on the Leeward Coast, uh, although we're going to do some audits in other areas, but uh, starting off with the Leeward Coast and then eventually expanding to the whole island. Wow. And do you, the, does Pono Homes come in with the entire package that includes the LED lamps? Um, you know, we, uh, we, we work actually, Pono Homes is a uh, contractor working for Honeywell. Our, our prime uh, consultant on this effort is Honeywell. Uh, they also help with energy uh, rebates uh, for Hawaii Energy. Uh, but, um, and they have Pono Homes as, uh, as their, uh, subcontractor that's doing the effort. So uh, I think there's a great opportunity when we go into a home uh, and we're, this focus is for water, but I think the opportunities are energy savings. At the end of the day, uh, energy efficiency, water efficiency saves the same customer who's paying both bills, uh, saves them money uh, each month. So I think it's, it makes good sense to, to try to do this efforts together. 
We are looking at uh, how do we expand this effort to, say, uh, larger buildings, um, uh, businesses that have uh, more um, energy and water use, and how do we uh, leverage the rebates from Hawaii Energy and the Board of Water Supply to their benefit? Hmm. Well, restaurants come to mind in that instance. Yeah. Yeah, restaurants, we're already working with them and through the Hawaii Restaurant Association, uh, reaching out to them and also to the hotel industry, to yeah. the visitor industry, uh, because there there is some sizable water use there. Uh, yeah. You get a hotel with, I don't know, 300 guest rooms and the guests are out beaching or shopping or whatever. And then in the evening, they all come back to their hotel, and probably one of the first things they do is jump in the shower. That, yeah. That's true. Uh, and we've been working uh, closely. Uh, uh, some of the chains that are been very helpful is like the Outrigger Hotel chain. Uh, mm -hmm. They've been a good partner. And uh, they also, hotels have a lot of restaurants, uh, food establishments, so they're also mm -hmm. big water users there. So going in there to do uh, water audits to educate uh, the um, the restaurant owners and operators. Uh, also, you know, spray nozzles, uh, handheld spray nozzles, uh, so that the water's not continuously running in their sinks. Um, but it's all all of this effort together. Mm -hmm. uh, before I I forget, uh, Howard, I just wanted to say too, uh, for the next uh, three months or so, we've. Uh, over doubled our rebate for replacing old water inefficient toilets. So toilets mm -hmm. that use uh, 1.6 gallons or more, uh, we're providing a rebate now. It's, uh, it used to be, I think, around $40, and now we've increased it to $100 per toilet uh, to go to a 1.28 or less uh, gallons per mm -hmm. flush. Um, and we want to enc encourage people to retire those old toilets uh, that are used more water uh, because that's a that's a guarantee, almost a guaranteed way to save water oh, yeah. in a home. Because we all, you know, we all have to use the rest of the bathroom mm -hmm. uh, every day, and um, um, w uh, toilets that are more water efficient will save water and and save our customers money too. And just to end on a cheery note, we go back to the disadvantaged communities. They very often you you and I may have one, two, three people in a home. Very often, they have eight, nine, ten people in one apartment, and that equals a heck of a lot more water use. So again, we're you're helping the the disadvantaged. Yeah, yeah. We we hope that the uh, the toilet rebate program will be uh, a, a lot of demand for it uh, because you know we can look at uh, trying to make that rebate even uh, more permanent. Uh, and it's all available to residential and to commercial customers, too. Beautiful. Well, on that very, very cheery note, Ernie Lau, it's great seeing you again, and congratulations. And I will, maybe I should ask you for the bumper sticker. I heart Ernie uh, Lau. No, <laughs> no, Howard, no, please don't mention that. I, it's, a, it's a little embarrassing. You know, like you said earlier, <laughs> I'm going to just say a, a government bureaucrat a government worker a public a public servant and mm -hmm. uh, we're just doing our kuleana uh for our yep. community yep I, i'm exactly of, of that same mind so we must say fond adieu ernie lau howard wig code green think tech hawaii see you next time <laughs>